Hey, y'all, uh, we back with another episode, uh, episode three, I think it is, right? So yes, okay. guys, welcome to the Dope and Damage podcast. I am Ness. We got Nasima in the building, of course. We got JD in the building. I was almost going to say Jay-Z again. I can't. And we have a special guest today. She goes by the name of Venus, and she's an amazing artist. So uh, before we do anything, we're just going to like listen to a few seconds of her new song, Atlantis. Yep. Yeah. Ooh, love it. <laughs> Me too. Love, 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 love it. Great song, Venus. And welcome to the show. Thank welcome, you. Venus. Thank you. Yeah. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you guys. And we're excited to have you, right? <laughs> so who is Venus? Who is Venus? Yeah, oh, I was we- looking at your Instagram and I was like, your Instagram is who who is Venus, right? Correct. Yeah, even even the website is who is I Venus. Love that name. Yeah, who is Venus? <laughs> So who are you? Thank you. Yeah, I'm who is Venus on. <laughs> who are you? Ness is so direct. Who are you? Yeah. Who are you? Wh- what purpose. do you do? And why are you here? <laughs> All of that. Oh, well, I'm a being from the fourth dimension. I was sent here. No, I'm just playing. Oh. Um, my name is. I, I Venus. believed you for a second. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Venus. I'm an R&B artist from Texas. Um, shout out to Fort Worth, Bucky Town, DFW area. That's where we. That's where I hail from. Um, I'm a high school educator by day and um, an artist by nature. I am just out here trying to create and give the world some uh, dope music. Mm-hmm. So first we have to establish that you and Asima have something in common because she's a educator by day as well. Oh, wow. I am, really? yeah. So what grade? Primary school. So I do supply teaching. So it's all from I don't know what you call it in the US but it's from uh, the age of three to the age of 11. Okay yes yeah. yes that is um, primary oh yeah over there um, elementary here mm-hmm. um, that's cool so you get them started and I just you and you finish on. them off. <laughs> <laughs> well yes definitely great to have you on the show so how we um Nasima had a question because it was raining all week and what inspired that question that you asked a couple of days ago oh yeah so what's it gonna ask um getting wet in the rain is it sexy yay or nay (laughs) (laughs) definitely definitely a yay that's really Really? random but (laughs) yes I mean okay can I can I say can I okay I'm gonna tell y'all a secret so Never mind. I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> oh my god, we want the juice here. We you love it. We this. love this. Want it? You want yes. It? Yeah. So, oh my god, this is so bad. Um, so one of my fantasies is like being out in the rain, like, like just I've never done that, but the rain is it's just like the sexiest thing. Is that's like a fantasy of mine. It's just not being out in the rain, but being out in the rain. I feel you. I feel you. You mean like it's naked? <laughs> yeah, like right. hmm. naked. See? On a on a car, maybe you know. On a, come on, See, how'd I know? How'd I know that? <laughs> like a Bentley. I, I don't care what kind of car. It just got to be short enough that I could be on it. Because <laughs> oh I'm I, I don't want to. You don't. You don't want a hood emblem. You want a smooth hood. You know, it's just the details. I feel you. you. Know, how you is this me. that every time we do an episode, we just get sexual from the beginning? What is this? <laughs> is that what happens? Is that what y'all do? <laughs> yes. Okay, we really break the ice. It's not like a small thing. It's, you know, we really break through the ice and yeah. get to know our guests, you know. Mm-hmm. That's good yeah, to know. I, I, we had we had rain yesterday in California and it was just enough like precipitation where I enjoy being out in the rain. But if I get too wet, that's not, I want to go dry off. Or just a little bit of wet. See, JD, I'm with you because I do not like to get wet. My clothes, my shoes, uh, my hair. Uh, no, no. To me, that's not sexy. Like, you know, people say it's romantic to be out in the rain and go for a walk. No, it's very inconvenient. Oh, okay, so oh. there's two types of rain. You have the like the rain with the sunshine mm. and that that's like that warm rain. You know, that's a whole vibe. But um. See, the way my hair is set up, um, <laughs> if I get, gets wet, it's like a whole fro. So, you know, I, I definitely duck the rain when my hair is is pressed, but. Yeah. <laughs> and now, sometimes, Sima, what, what about you? 
Yeah. Um, I love the rain. <laughs> um, I would like you know when it sprinkles a little bit and it's like showers. Um, I, I try and keep away from that, but I want it to come down like a monsoon. And <laughs> I know, and you know how people like scurry away and they're all hiding in the shops. You know when you're out shopping, and I'm just like walking in the street and it's raining and I don't care. Because it's okay. It's like, I'm okay with the rain. It's like, if it's going to soak me, it might as well do it properly. And it's so refreshing as well. So I think it's really sexy. <laughs> I have to be, I Stop love it. to be in the bed when a good monsoon type rain comes through. Like that's the best sleep ever. Oh, oh yes. yeah. The sound is so soothing. And, and some people smell really bad in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <that's hard. laughs> oh my god! Which? They smell like dog. I'm sorry. This is who's true. they? Who's they? Oh, some, some people. Who are these people? Them people. Some people. Them people. Them people. Okay. Them people. <laughs> I have noticed that. I have noticed that. Oh, so okay. Well, mm -hmm. yeah. glad I'm not it's the not only. It's not them. It must be the the clothes they're wearing because it that can't be. Must be it. Yeah, if we it's were the all hair. naked in the rain, then maybe it, it's that the would hair. It's the hair. It's the hair. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's the shampoo, the hair products that some people use that reacts with the water and it makes it smell like a, a, a dog. That could be it. Well, I guess we could joke all we want. The rain brings mm -hmm. blessings. All right, guys. So we're just actually getting ready to get to our next section, which is becoming my favorite oh. section. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, it's that ready. time again. It's that time it's again. It's that Brace time yourselves. again. Yes, yeah. it is. So <clears throat> the next section is which? Which section is it, JD? Come on. You tell uh, Well, it's probably the confessions, if I had to guess by everyone's reaction. It's probably time for our dope and damaged confessions, Secrets. which has been secret confession, which has been a hit the first two weeks. I don't know why. Oh, I know. We have some good stories to share, you know, something honest, being vulnerable, sharing with each other, you know, no one else, just us four here, right? It's a safe, safe space. Safe to share. Am I going first? Is that what's happening? Um, No, <laughs> definitely not, because okay. we want okay, the best fall out. So <laughs> Um, I went I went first last week. I don't want to go first again. And um, Sima went, oh well, I guess mm, Venus, yeah. how how about you? Can I do that to you? Can oh, I what? you want to do that to Venus? I'll That's go first. Yeah. Okay, Nasima go goes first. <laughs> okay, well, my one's not as saucy as JD's was. Um, I wanted it to be saucy, but maybe in the future we'll see mm -hmm. about that. But because you know, all my confessions and secrets have been about um, when I was younger, I thought, let me give you one that's more recent. Mm -hmm. So, um, and Ness, also, can you check your messages as well, by the way? Um, <laughs> oh, just, oh, okay. Just check your messages. And also, okay, so here oh we go. Oh, my God. So I went, uh, this summer, I took my son and my nieces out, and um, we actually went to um, an open zoo, like a, we did a little safari. I'm sure JD remembers that I went, yeah. Um, so what happened is I was just walking down the road with everyone and they were doing these tour buses. It was like a van bus with so many people were on it, right? So because the, it was so beautiful, the surroundings, I was just looking around. I wasn't paying attention to the rocky ground. And what happened is I tripped over and I fell. Um <laughs> with like I was carrying everybody's lunch and also like all my son's stuff because he needs a lot of things when we're like on a day out so I fell over and it was it's like you know when you fall, fall over and it's so embarrassing and it's just like oh my god but the worst thing was guys there was a tour bus truck whatever coming towards me and it stopped <laughs> and everybody on the bus looked oh no it was like, oh, uh, and I, I quickly got up. I was like, I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> and I was like, I hope the tour driver didn't say. And here we see a, sapi <laughs> on the a homo right. sapien. Uh, Still <laughs> learning to balance. Erectus. Yeah. 
learning to walk on his twos, his tattoos. But like, it was really bad, guys. It was really bad. And, you know, it made me think, like, why do people feel so embarrassed when they fall over? Because there's so many things we can do, right? But that's the one thing you don't want to do. You don't want to fall over in front of a crowd of people and then the whole bus stops for you. Did, did you have any type of, like, wardrobe malfunctions when oh. you fell? No, I mean, I had a lot of dust on my leggings, but that was about okay. it. Okay, it was a safe, it was a safe fall yeah. then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You good, you But good. yeah, I had to share that. I had to share that. I mean, the, you know, the worst thing is falling over when you're on a date with someone. Oh my God, can you imagine? And it's happened to me. <laughs> so is balance an issue for you? Yeah, because oh. I'm really clumsy. You have an inner ear problem, maybe? I don't know. I balance. don't know. But yeah, that, that's Equal my, uh, yeah, it's not such a secret because my family members know about it, but yeah. Mm. There you go. I'll start you guys off. Shout out to the Siva for paying attention to my, my pants because they're being like acting funny and weird. But I think we're good now. <laughs> it's all right. We're getting all raunchy in here. Yeah. <laughs> but not we falling over and that. That's not raunchy. Okay. Um, <laughs> Who wants to go next? Next, I'm gonna go next. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go. So you know, when I used to go to school, I uh, my parents uh, so I participated in some music class, and we all had to um, you know get an instrument to play. So okay, so I got the saxophone, and I hated this thing. I did not want to play the saxophone. I wanted to learn to play the piano, but the teacher wouldn't let me. He said, "Okay, you got to play the saxophone for whatever reason. Maybe I look like." I need to play the saxophone. I don't know. So, and this really upset me. First of all, it was heavy. I didn't really like it. And um, I was really, really, really annoyed. So these are instruments that we, we um, borrowed from the school. So obviously, once we're done, we got to give them back. But we, we took them home because we had to practice and all of that kind of stuff. And after like three months, I really had enough and I just uh, left it somewhere and I told everybody I lost it and it was, I don't know what happened with it. Um, I just, I forgot it on the bus or something. I told the teachers and my parents and everybody else, I just wanted to lose this stupid thing and never have to play it again. And it worked y'all. <laughs> they never That's gave me terrible. another saxophone, but they gave me a clarinet. So I don't know what's worse. Those are expensive. I know, but I didn't have, I didn't, <laughs> I was 11, y'all, <laughs> I didn't care. I would, I guess. If I found out, I would charge you. If I found out you did that, I'd send you a bill. <laughs> now? Yeah, I would. I would That's deny it. I'm like, this is for. just, this is for the podcast. <laughs> okay, okay. Yes, you're going to deny it? <laughs> yes, I would. No, it's I'm out there actually. now. It's out it's there. Yeah. Record. It's, it's out there. It's record. I'm not sorry, school, and I'm not sorry, mom and dad. Sorry, not sorry. Yeah. That's the hashtag. Venus, what do you think? Are you, you feel comfortable sharing a, a secret confession? I'm sitting here thinking of secret confessions. I don't. Mm. I could go. I could let you think some more. I, I got one. Okay. Okay. Hey, let's no, go. I'm, I'm ready let's confession. go. I got a lot to confess. I got a lot to get yeah, on my let's chest. Go. Let's so he go. killed a mouse and then he wore <laughs> a thong. So this what? week. <laughs> nah, you got to go back and listen to the other episodes. I don't know what she's talking about. Like, that's crazy. That's crazy. But anyway, mm -hmm. this week, so what I have to share, what's on my heart to share, mm -hmm. um, I'm taking notes from you ladies because y'all are so gracious and graceful and you share these awesome stories when you're young, graceful. get into mischief. Falling over. Graceful. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> gracious. And, oh, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to rethink that one. So this, I was in fifth grade or sixth grade. I must have been 10 or 11. I'm at a new school and um, I was taking piano lessons and I had to learn, a, you know, I didn't know the saxophone or the clarinet. I learned the piano and the principal was also my piano teacher. And so I would get off of school about two or three o'clock and I would play with my friends for a little bit. And then I would get called into the um, area to get the piano lesson. But I was getting really sick of my teacher. And I said, and I asked my parents if I could stop. And they said, no, you have to finish out through the year. I said, okay, well, I'm just going to run away from school, from home, from everything. But I didn't just run away. I had a plan. So what I did was I wrote like a goodbye note to my parents and I sealed it up. And uh, when all the kids were leaving for school and I was supposed to be in the playground area, I acted like my parents were there to pick me up. I dropped off the letter at the uh, uh, principal's office, sealed like a goodbye note forever for my parents. 
And I just ran away. I walked off the campus. I went down the street, went to the park and played a bit. Uh, I went to the grocery store. When I went in the grocery store, they said, hey, are, are you lost? And I'm like, how do they know I'm lost, right? And I got to thinking, I said, where am I going to go? I didn't have a suitcase. I didn't have any clothes. So I took my behind back to school and I got the letter and I tore it up. And I waited for my parents to get there. And somehow nobody ever found out that I was missing from school and everything for like three hours. So I was mischievous. So and I kept all, all my clothes on. I wore my clothes. Nobody died. No animals were harmed. I just ran away. Your underwear. Rebellious. <laughs> no, but the whole fact that he wrote a letter, like he was really like. I was serious. <laughs> and it was like harshly worded. I was like, look, I'm sick of taking piano. I hate this school. I don't like you guys. I'm out. Like it was a full on like manifesto. <laughs> Respectfully. That's crazy. I feel better lightening my load. So now they know. Not sorry, Miss Anderson. Sorry, parents. I won't do sorry, it. Sorry, not I'll... sorry. So, Venus, you got something for us? Oh my goodness, y'all are okay. Hmm. I have it's been be thinking and thinking and thinking because all my secrets are stuff that like are cr- a little criminal. That's okay. <gasps> oh no, oh, no, that's your limitations. No, no, that's your limitations. <laughs> and die. Do I not mean, disclose you let it die. activity here unless he was two years old. And then it's, could, I guess you could say allegedly, okay. allegedly, yeah. So, a girl I know allegedly yeah. at some point, a friend of mine, yeah, yeah. Angela, you a friend of mine, my, yeah. My mom is like the best. Per- I wish if I had, if I could, if I had known, I would have called her. She's like the goat of telling my secrets, uh, like stories. Um, I really, I really don't have anything other than my guilty pleasure of no one knows this um so i've been single a long time and so one of the things that scares me about getting into a relationship is the fact that i watch golden girls every night and it's a must that i watch golden girls every night and so i don't know how that will work if i bring a partner in because then they would be like why are we watching golden girls every night like really what's up with that yeah why are we doing that venus I who's love Golden Girls. Are you yeah, talking about the film? Yeah, the series. The series or the film? The film. The series. Oh, the series. The Golden, okay. The Golden Girls. And I, and, I, and I just, that's what I fall asleep on every night. Mm. I like that show. So, yeah, me too. But who's your favorite Golden Girl? Oh, my goodness. I, I love Dorothy. I can, like, really relate to her, uh, her satire and her just... She's funny. She's so quick with it, you know, and she's just chill at the same time. Like, I can really relate to her. But comedic wise, Rose, you know, Betty White is the girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you but know. do you, she really is. can you recite some ep- episodes? Probably you can't, right? <laughs> oh, yes. All of them. Like, where do we start? <laughs> It's sad. Why Why is that? Why do I love the Golden Girls so much? It's nuts. It's nostalgic. I don't think it's sad. Yeah. No, wait, it's wait so a second. Do you watch it on TV or do you have a DVD? Is it on no, live? I watch, or on it, I watch it on, um, I watch it on, on, on TV. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. That's not sad. No, no, it's not. It's I mean, to be honest, I, I have that same thing with sometimes the nanny, sometimes King of Queens. Yes, everybody loves Raymond. I mean, I can't now, if you had like the collector set, like the DVDs, yeah. and you just watched the same episode over and over again, that would be a little sad. That that why little this sad. is the it same thing? Putting, the actual um, motion of putting the, the DVD in would be a little bit, <laughs> a little bit, yeah. But since you just turn it on, like watch normal TV, and it's just your favorite show, that's cool. When DVDs were a thing, I thought it was weird to watch DVDs on my own. I always thought I should be doing that with someone together, but I don't have that with Netflix. <laughs> right, right. DVD and chill. Too weird. DVD and chill. DVD <laughs> and chill. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, yeah, that was that chill. was a, yeah that was an era. Yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah, it was really DVD and chill. Actually, yeah. Sometimes yeah, it's next good time to I come the on the show, I'm gonna have a juicier story for you. I just oh, like you definitely coming back. I Maybe like something that. in the rain. Who knows? You know. So, you know. <laughs> well, the only reason why I'm cutting you slack because you did share a secret in in um, in the first segment with the mm-hmm. rain. <laughs> 
You shared a fantasy. That was actually. the secret. Like that was exactly. the secret. Yeah. Oh my gosh, you're actually giving me ideas. We should have double damage confession secrets and fantasies. Oh God, mm. no, please don't. Mm. Next no. season. Next <laughs> season. <laughs> yeah, yes, like double damage after that. dark. <laughs> yeah. Okay, mm. so unfortunately, the next segment, uh, Nasima, you're gonna take us through it is a little bit more on the serious note, but we had to had to bring it in and had to mention it. A, because it's a must, and B, because it's going under in the media. Like, really, nobody talks about it since bigger news are taking over. I was almost yeah. going to say it, yeah. but I didn't. <laughs> so, Nasima, take us through. The yeah, of course. Story. So, our next segment is obviously what story we're focusing on this week. Story in the media. It's not really been that much in the media because we know what's in the media right now with the queen passing away um, and the new king. Uh, so, you know, they've had a lot of media coverage, but the one thing I did want to mention, um, certain channels have been airing it, but definitely the BBC has not in the UK. Um, so one of the major BBC news channels hasn't been uh, covering the story at all. Uh, and there was a protest as much. So actually, let me start off with, it happened last Monday, um, gentleman called Chris Kaba was shot by armed police in London after um, after trying to get uh, they were chasing him uh, in 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 the vehicles mm -hmm. um, and yet yeah, they shot him because they thought he had a firearm even though they didn't see a firearm and he was actually he died so um, one shot one and shot yeah, yeah one shot and he dried um Streth uh, streatham in south london okay and there has been protests and i wasn't even aware that there's been protests because with everyone um kind of in london um everything's focused on the new king and the death of the queen I think I saw something, I can't validate it, but I did see something like Sky News and, and they said it was people marching for the Queen. But oh my God. It's not. It's how can you get that wrong? You know, you can't get these things wrong. Um, Channel 4 News has been airing it. Um, I think Sky News aired it, but maybe they got it wrong last night and they fixed it this morning. Um, but, you know, there's people out there which uh, who are saying no justice, no peace, Black Lives Matter. And this is just reminding me of what happened with Mark Duggan. If anyone knows, it happened in the UK, um, 2011, I think. Yes, um, yeah, so, yeah, yeah so, that. you know, that just caused such an upheaval. It was the start of all the London riots, lasted, like, you know, such a long time. Um, and we just want to say a 24 year old rapper um he was really doing his thing trying to come up with this music and um it's 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 really tragic when i mean not that age matters or what he did matters but when you know some details about someone it just makes the picture more clearer we kind of like thought we have to bring this to this platform because we need to talk about it and um yeah, it's I'm just institutional it racism. It's just, it's ongoing. This yeah. is not anything new. The London Met, this is nothing new. And it's just like, how can you, you know, you haven't been able to tell the parents, you haven't been able to show the um, the body cam footage. No one knows why he got shot. Well, they're saying, you know, his uh, car uh, was registered as a car that was um, linked to uh, an incident that happened a couple of days earlier uh, in relation to a firearm but the thing is the car didn't even belong to him like they yeah. found that out afterwards and there was no evidence of him having a firearm but yet still he was shot to death so you know this is actually going to be investigated under homicide investigation now but he's um, still working right that policeman he is not he hasn't been suspended this is the yeah. thing the officer hasn't been suspended but i think he's on different duties um but i don't know i just uh, I, I thought this to... was a uniquely american problem i didn't no. know that unarmed or just people were being shot by the police and killed in the uk yeah. i thought that the police didn't even have guns over there i really oh, didn't they do have guns in the in they Europe. do they do yeah. it's called I armed response that. officers so they have guns yeah Oh, so not all of them do. Is that correct? No, not all of them. They're specialized. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a, it's a specialized unit. 
Yeah, and you know, one thing I wanted to say was the only uh, police officer that was uh, charged and sentenced um, previously was um, someone called Benjamin Monk. And he, well, I'm going to say he murdered Dalian Atkinson. Oh, uh, anyone yeah. heard about Dalian yeah. Atkinson? So this PC officer was jailed for eight years for manslaughter and mm -hmm. Dalian At Atkinson was a ex-footballer for Aston Villa yeah. um, and that only happened in 2021 um, and that was brutal what happened. What, um, what, what was this, the circumstances in that one? Was, was he, was it a regular stop or no what happened was he was having i i would say a mental health uh episode yes mm -hmm. and um it looked as though he was going to cause harm to himself and others then we had the police officer taser him to the point where he was unconscious and then kick him in the head a couple of times um and the police officer's partner who was on duty with him beat him up with a baseball bat after this person was on the floor um yeah. so how is that even you know it just doesn't it cannot be excused i don't even see how that is manslaughter to be honest with you it's not it's, it's not, not. It's but that's the only case in the uk incredible. yeah so i just wanted to the, the fact that he was that he was put in jail that he was convicted <clears throat> of something that seems unbelievable to me because every time i hear about something it's they get suspended, they get paid leave, they get a raise, you know, it's like there's no consequences at all. Mm -hmm. So, so it's terrible. I, I know somebody who got um, shot here by the police and um, he barely survived. And um, they started an investigation and then they told everybody that policeman died from, uh, from heart failure after a few months. But strangely, that policeman was seen in a faraway city after doing research, a lot of research. He was found working for another police force there. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. Wow. Faith is dead? Yes. Oh, that is insane. Corruption wow. is deep. But well, that's the thing I was about to say is that it is apparently obvious that, that, that the police force has, no matter where they are, is like one of the biggest gangs you know, they're, they're bigger than the gangs, they're bigger than, than the people they serve. And it's, and it's unfortunate, I, I feel like, and I'm so sick of having this conversation. Um, yes. You know, it's just, it's just a, it's daunting um, how many times we've had this conversation. And, um, and I'm also sick of nothing being done about it. You know, uh, we're all human. I don't care. Um, once you put on a uniform, does it make you um, invincible. It doesn't make you um, any different than the people that you serve. And I emphasize the word serve. And so um, we lose our humanity when we, when we handle other human beings without the dignity um, that we would, we would want to be handled with. And we would want our children and our parents to be handled with. And so um, I'm just, I'm just sick of this conversation because it's, you know, things are not changing. And we can't move forward as a society, as a people, as a race, as a culture, as a planet without change. And so it's a, it's, it's almost an insurmountable task to figure out where to begin. Um, but all the things that are being proposed are not um, being implemented. There's no change to be seen and, and it's unfortunate. And I land my plane there. <laughs> yes, and you were so right with everything you said, and um, we want to definitely say rest in peace, um, Chris Carver, oh my God, and Chris condolences Carver. to his family. Absolutely, his prayers friends. go up. Definitely, yeah, yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit about you. Let's put you on the hot seat. Okay. So we'll talk about the the new album, or I'm excited. I mean, when you when the the title came out, Alanis. I was like, okay, I know Alanis Morissette. So I initially got it, right? Because that album, uh, Jagged Little Pill for Alanis Morissette is huge in my growing up, right? That, and, you know, being a uh, black male, uh, straight, cisgendered, right? People don't expect me to listen to Alanis Morissette, but I do. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, miss, I'll miss my exit. I'll miss my turn listening to Alanis just rocking out, right? She's so powerful. So I feel like I get that vibe from you, like a powerful female artist. So 
what connected you to to Alanis and made you title the record that? Oh, thank you for saying that, by the way. Um, and yes, Alanis is amazing. So I have, um, like, before I dropped Alanis, um, I um, dropped a, a Sade and um, Alicia Keys mashup that I that I created. And so I've just been on a mission to, um, like, I, uh, be in this journey of um, music. And my my side passion is paying homage to those who came before me and people that um, influenced myself as an artist. And Alanis is one of those, um, just as much as Sade and Alicia. And so, um, you know, a lot of the newer generation might not know of Sade's music or they might not know of Alanis. And so it's just bringing that, tying her in and that relevancy. So they go, well, who is Alanis? And where is she getting mm-hmm. these you know, these lyrics from. So, so they can tap into ironic, you know, and go back and listen to things like you ought to know. But like you mm-hmm. said, the jagged, jagged little pill, um, it's just incredible. That whole album. Yeah, it's crazy. I think this yeah. is uh, so interesting that you said that, right? Because so when I was going through your music earlier and I was listening and I was like, okay, this is like the whole sound, you know, is very, is, is unique to me or authentic, I should say, you know? So I was like, okay, so this is a very authentic sound. We don't really hear that nowadays so much. And I don't know why, but I just, Sade came to my head straight away. Like I heard your voice. I heard the direction, the sound and everything was like, bam, Sade. Wow. And you you hadn't even heard the Sade match? No, I didn't even know you did that. That's why I'm saying like, wow, crazy. Because I was going to ask you if uh, you are kind of like inspired by Sade, but I mean, you already answered that. So for me, that's why like when I heard it, it was like, okay, so this is sounds like modern day Sade. That's what she would do probably if she was uh, out now, you know? She was like 40 years younger or how, how much ever younger. Wow, that's so dope that you made that connection. Yes, I love, <laughs> love, love Sade. I mean, she's an amazing storyteller. And that's that's myself. I see a lot of myself in that is just um, being real lyrical and um, telling the stories and, and making the soundtracks to people's lives. And um, Sade did that very well. She did that very well. Mm-hmm. And so did Alanis. Alanis did that very well. I didn't clock that. JD told me that because I was like, okay, so what is Alanis? And then when he explained it, I'm like, okay, I actually, and I love when people have these kind of like not so straightforward lyrics where you have to think or wonder or try to find out what it means, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, you got it. And, and and like I said, I just want people to be like, like you, like, what is that? What is Alanis? And then the ones that don't know, just go back. And, re- and, and research her and listen to her and be like, wow, like, you know, the things that she wrote, the lyrics that she wrote, like, I'm, I'm broke, but I'm sober. I'm young and I'm underpaid. I'm tired, but I'm working, baby. Like, she has these lyrics and these way of telling stories that, you, I mean, you just stop listening to the music and you just mm-hmm. listen to the words. And so yeah. I love artists like that, 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 the, that the lyrics is just as great as the music behind it. That song gonna be in my head now. <laughs> Got one hand in my pocket. <laughs> Man, that whole wow takes me back. You know. Yeah, for sure. When I when I heard when I came across you on uh, on Clubhouse, you were playing your music in like in a poetry music room or something like a showcase. Yes. And I couldn't help but notice everybody in that room reacted very strongly to the song that you played. I don't remember the name of it, <clears throat> but people were asking, "Oh, what's it called? When's it coming out?" Can I buy it? Can I stream it? You know, it was a very genuine, like soul reaction of people needed to hear it again. And I, I don't see that very often. You know, people will give like a, a passing compliment, like, oh, that was good. I like it. Good luck. But everyone was like, I need that song. <laughs> so you're doing something right. You're doing Do something Do you remember right. which one it was? I don't. I don't. It was we really, really good. Yeah, so I don't think I, the room was recording. I'm not sure, but I, I played Live a Lie. I think I played Live a Lie and Coffee. Coffee is typically not sure. I just remember how it made me feel. Yeah, I just remember how it made me feel. I don't remember the, the lyrics or anything. And that was my first time um, being in that room. And I just kind of sat back a little bit and just listened to the poets. And, you know, I used to write poetry, um, love poetry. I'm mm-hmm. such a poetry fan. But then music became my poetry. 
And so that's why I decided to share um, the song because um, that's that's where my soul is, is in the music. And I, and I was found the love of creating, um, you know, mixing the poetry with the sound. Well, play another song of yours, please, just for a few seconds. We just want to hear something you have already, the second. So what we heard in the beginning uh, of the podcast was a few seconds of Alanis. But um, before we continue, I'd love to get the exclusive of this hearing or listening to your new single, which, I mean, Alanis just dropped. So we just want to be a little bit patient, you know, we just want (laughs) to let Alanis do its thing. But we still, I'm I'm curious as, you know, being in music, I want to hear what's next. Like, you know, you want to hear what's next? Yes, for a few seconds. And the same, check your phone. Yeah, I have, I have. (laughs) On 10, 10, um, I'm dropping Live a Lie. Mm -hmm. There shortly thereafter, I will drop the whole album. Um, And it'll be a whole collection of work. Um, Is it the first time dropping an album? It is. It's my first, uh, it's my debut album. I've just been, I've been working, diligently working on this for a while and um, revamped it three times. I've thrown away two other albums um, and I'm just, I'm to a point where I think I got it and I think I got exactly who I want to present to the world. And um, so this this album is going to be the first of um, 22. So it's called Major Arcana, The Lovers. And then um, I'm going through each of the Major Arcana. Um, it's they're all they're all each album is based on the energy of that of that card. So The Lovers is all about love and relationships and interactions. And um, so, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. This is like my life's work. How many did you say? How many of those are there? 22. 22. That's how many albums you're going to put out? Yes. Yeah. In the next 22 years? Like that. 22 years. I love it. Like every year an album. (laughs) It's definitely my life's work, you know, and I look forward to being able to see it through and deliver. Wow, that's heavy. But in what time span? I don't know. Whatever life brings. Like, you know, I, I, I go with the flow. You know, I'm almost hippie-ish in that manner. It's like time All right. doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. When I the music that. hits, mm-hmm. there's no time, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what's your situation? Do we have management? Do we have, what's, what's up? Yeah, so my situation is, man, I, I work with great people. I have a great team behind me. And, um, and I'm always looking to expand on that. But I have a great team that we are getting ready to do some great things um and and i'm just excited for the future and uh, you will definitely know who my team is and everybody that i rock with because they're all moving and we all move in the same way so i'm super excited about that well, shout out yeah. to the team yeah. shout out. Shout out. so um how do you balance um how do you balance the teaching with releasing these musical things? Because if I was to do that in the UK, everyone would be looking me up and be like, oh, Miss Chowdhury, what are you doing? You know? <laughs> <laughs> what, what, you got foul language or you got uh, some kind of a stuff you shouldn't be saying on there? You know, do, do you feel like it? How do you feel when you're teaching and the children know that you're doing these or have they come across your music? That's so funny that you asked that. Um, and that is a wonderful question. So initially, when I first started um, a year ago, um, I wanted to be anonymous um, because not for other reasons, but that was one of them. And um, I just wanted to remain anonymous, mostly because I feel like we put so much emphasis on celebrities and um, not enough on the music that they're creating. And so I wanted to, you know, push this brand of music over image. Um, but um, so when I started, I started from ground zero. My students didn't know I did music until I had a conversation um, with, an, with an artist that's been in the industry for a long time. And um, she was like, you know, a lot of people have tried that before. And she was like, you just, you just great. You know, many people were just like, we need to see you. We need to Yeah, because her did are. it. Um, what's, what's the other girl? Jill Scott did it for a little bit. Um, oh man, what's the Macy Gray tried it for a while. Oh, and there that's you go. The reference that she made, she was like, "You just remind me of Macy." And um, so I just like to stay your way better than Macy, but that's just my opinion. Shout out to Macy Gray. I love shout Macy. out to Macy Gray. 
Um, but she, you know, she had her own sound. You know, she had her own yes. sound. Yes, yes. And, and if you hear her play, you know it's her, you know. Mm-hmm. Undeniably so. Um, so, yeah, so with the, with the students now, they're very involved. Like, um, my students, um, I, one of my content manager, um, who just um, is her first year in college now, shout out, shout out to Michaela Case, love her. Love her, love her. Someone, someone, someday she is already something. But um, I get my students involved. Um, she's been an instrumental in helping me understand TikTok and things mm-hmm. like that. And shout so, out you know, to Michaela. <laughs> shout out to Michaela. I have, I have um, high schoolers, you know, and they're older. And so me saying one cuss word in a song is very slight compared to what they listen to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I don't, <laughs> so I don't feel so bad. Um, but yeah, I definitely get them involved and they're just um, some of my biggest advocates on social media and um, in the background. So that's amazing. M- imagine that in the UK, Nasima. Oh yeah, can you imagine the parents coming up to my door, knocking on the door? <laughs> Why you about children? Yeah. Why are you forcing my child? Why are you yeah, that like be so cool in primary school. <laughs> no, like, it wouldn't. Unless it you're wouldn't. doing like, you know, you could always do like um the little learning music and stuff for it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know? Something yeah. with a dance along with it that the kids can learn, you know? Uh-huh. Correct. TikTok dance. Oh, should so, we, uh, Venus, do you want to like call out your social medias where people can find you and look into your, keep, to keep yeah, up with you? Absolutely. Who is Venus on all platforms? And just remember the V, uh, the number three replaces the E. So who is Venus, V3 and US on all um, platforms. Um, and uh, my website is whoisvenus.com. And, um, there great you website, it, by the way. But, yeah. but it will be in the show Thank notes. You. Don't worry if y'all can't mm-hmm. remember. Yeah, links <laughs> in. Yeah, Definitely. it will be in the show notes. Um, I would love to come to the UK. That's just one of my... my oh, man, you, you would do great in the UK. Well, listen, I, feel um, so. I would love, love, love to hear some more of your music. And sure. I would love, love, love to introduce you to some people. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, if I can, connections, if, I love it. Yeah, if I can help. I'm definitely no, because I was thinking that this morning. I'm like, okay, so this is this sound actually works well in the UK. But apart from that, I just would love to introduce you to some people. I think um, there's maybe some things. I, I, you know how the entertainment industry is. You know, ninety percent is talk and ten percent actually goes through. This is why I'm not somebody who likes to talk a lot about what I'm doing or what's going on. I just that's why I'm not promising anything. I just I'm just um, able to make some connects. <laughs> That is super amazing. Um, and that's what that's what life is, is about the connections, right? And um, making the connections. And I appreciate you for even oh, wanting absolutely. to absolutely. do that. So you write all of your music yourself? I do. I do. I write all of my music. And, um, you know, I'm open to writing for other artists. But um, I, I, I love writing. So, um, I mean, women in entertainment, we have a moment right now, you know, like there's uh, scissors doing her thing, uh, Mooney Long, no, I'm sorry, Mooney Long, Money Long, I just, I, I never get her name right, she had uh, a number one, she had an amazing song, um, we don't need to talk about Beyonce and, um, and all of them, how do you feel um, that is for you in the independent scene, because you're still not signed, so um, you're still independent. Is that is that a big competition? Are women actually connecting more? Because I feel they used to in, in the past, women used to connect way more, or maybe it was just like something that I thought was going on. Because I got in the music industry when I was really early. Like I signed my first deal when I was 15. And for me, okay. the the way that things were or how I perceived them back then, looking back, is nowhere near how I thought things were, if if it makes sense. Because mm. with that fifteen, yeah, no, because with fifteen you look at things differently. But then when you think back now, and then you connect certain dots, and you're like, "Oh my God, you had it so twisted." <laughs> mm. What was one of the dots you connected looking back? So, in the beginning, you know, when I signed the deal, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know anything. I didn't know the number game. I didn't know what to pay attention uh, to. I didn't know anything. You know, certain things that people would say. Um, I I was in a group. I started out in a group. It didn't really go well because we had an artist development deal with uh, back then with a record label, with a big record label back then. We're not going to say no names. And um, that that 
uh, deal was like three years and it got bitter because you know the, the the problem is when you when you work with you know with females and especially that age you're 15 16 17 you're just you know like growing up you you're still kind of like rebellious and all of that um there is a lot of jealousy going on when somebody gets more attention than the other so mm -hmm. We did do a lot of traveling. We toured in Asia because what they used to do back then is um, put artists out in Asia first, you know, Taiwan, China, uh, Japan. Um, we did all of that and um, just to test the waters and then they would release the music in Europe and uh, all the other countries, you know? So it was a very, very hard time now connecting the dots with certain things certain things the management said you know and then at some point having to realize they screwed us over and we barely made money like but in four years we made twenty thousand dollars each i mean oh wow that's, that's unfortunate and and you're right um there are a lot of um just to be candid just there's a lot of snakes in the industry yes and um, there's a lot of people willing to take advantage of um those who aren't aware and knowledgeable and there's a lot of people wanting to take advantage of women. And, How do you uh, protect yourself? Your guard stays up. My guard stays up. Um, my guard stays up. I'm a true believer in sitting back and watching. And, um, and I'm a believer in action. And so I have to see um, what you're about. I don't go off of what you say. Then, and then also when you're young, you were, you said 14, 15. 15. Um, you don't have life experience behind you. Yes, exactly. That's your life experience right there, you know, happening real quick. And so I've had a little life experience behind me to know when um, someone is playing games or a BS in me, you know. And so um, it makes it a little easier for me, but it also makes it hard because, you know, as you at the same time, um, it makes it easier for me to turn those people away real quick. Um, women in music are making moves right now, and um, it's 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 incredible. It's fascinating, and um, it's it's great to watch all the um, the way we're changing changing the game. You know, I remember when Missy came out, and um, you know she was a, a a bigger woman, but she had all this amazing talent that she had to push, and she had to fight to get her her talents. Her the and her vision to be put through the way she wanted it to, to, to come across. And, you know, now, you know, you haven't seen a Missy since, but now you have Lizzo, you know, mm -hmm. on the bigger side who's able to do the same thing. And, you know, I just, I'm just so proud of, of the women that are, are out here working hard in this industry. Um, I just want to be a part this of is what I mean about institutional discrimination. It happens everywhere. You know, yeah, absolutely. it happens absolutely. everywhere. It's so deep rooted and, you know, people need to come together to change the system. I feel like independent artists, there's, and if you're in Clubhouse enough, um, if you're in the scenes with independent artists in these streets enough, you realize there's so many incredible artists that have never been heard mm, and a lot so that not, might never will be heard, unfortunately, mm. by the masses. But if, if the people who appreciate the music and are listening to them in the pubs and listening to them um, in the clubs and in the little coffee shops. If you advocate and push for these artists, that's where the change comes from. That's where the change comes from. And, and just like in the situations with the police, um, mm -hmm. the people have to make the change. The yeah. masses, the numbers, we have the numbers to do it. You know, and we can't allow the one or two individuals to keep controlling the game. If we keep allowing it, then that's just, we're going to get more of the same. And so I'm landing my plane again. How to the people. Let's <laughs> yeah. go, let's go. I had to say that. I can't help myself. Uh, I need to mute my mic. Huh? No. Before I get in trouble. Don't, don't mute your mic. Remember, we said unfiltered. Absolutely. Team unmute. That's crazy. Um, I just think, you know, to be honest, uh, there is a lot of artists and there is a lot of amazing artists, amazing, amazing artists. But um, it takes more these days than having talent, because these days as an artist, you wear 
25 different heads, you know, on one hand, mm -hmm. you got to do, I mean, of course you have people, if you have a team that's even greater, but still at the end of the day, you got to oversee everything, you know, you have to, you got to show up on social media, you got to, um, on all different type of platforms, you know, you got to, um, still promote your music. You still got to have your business head on because you don't want people to screw you over or any of this. You got to make decisions, you know, at the same time, you still got to, as an independent artist, you got to eat. So you got to make that money. So, um, there is a lot of pressure on independent artists, you know, because, how it's it's always this whole thing about okay so i gotta be corporate but at the same time i'm expected to be creative and i find to balance this is very very hard sometimes you are absolutely right it is so hard because as artists we just want to get in there and be creative you know we just want to go and have fun and do the and and, and you know the work and and preparing for performances and preparing for interviews that's what we want to do we don't want to have to worry about the business side of things and like you said, it takes a great team, but as independent artists, especially when you're just starting, it's just you and you're having to do all of this stuff. And um, it is a balance. Um, it is a balance. And then on top of that, you know, you, you throw in your work life and your home life and your family life. And it's, it is a balance, but um, man, there's so much beauty in the journey. Like I'm loving the journey, even with the bad, the good, the ugly, like I'm, still appreciative of the journey and it's going to make um the arrival that much more sweeter for sure i love how you said that yeah we're, we're slowly coming to the end this hour really flew by like always it just it's been an hour by. yes what? yes it's been an hour and um yes we gotta we gotta come to an end but um as you said earlier, we definitely would love to have you back. Um, I would love to come back. Thank you. Absolutely. Next time, next time we call your mom, just prepare her. <laughs> <laughs> I could call her right now. She's such a like, mom, 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 What? She would be up for it. No preparation on it. I love people yeah, who are like on the right spot. Now. She is. And she has this accent. So she's super cute. My mom is so cute. She's a little Barbadian lady with the accent. And she what loves she? telling stories. She's um, Bayesian. She's from Barbados. Oh, oh okay. nice. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, next That's where time. Rihanna's from, right? Is it Rihanna from yes. Barbados? Rihanna's yes. from Barbados, Sean yeah. Paul. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Sean yeah. Paul, yeah. Didn't yeah. they just um, come out of God? Didn't they just become sovereign? Yes. Come out? Yes, they did. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yeah, they did. Oh, shout out to Barbados. Shout out to yeah, Barbados. Shout out to them. Yeah. <laughs> I love Barbados, home. if you want to fly us in, we're my coming. Like. We're going to make it happen. That's my home. That's home. That's home. Right. That's home. Well, thank you again so much for being here with us today. I really appreciate it. We really appreciate it. I think I can speak for all of us saying that. Yeah, absolutely. I love it. And I love your smile. And just like, thank you know, you. when you look at someone's face, you can just tell how inviting and how like pure your heart is. And I just, Aww. I can see it. Bless <laughs> oh, you. Thank you. I, just, I just have to say, like, I was sitting here and I was just like, man, this is like the best interview I've, I've had thus far wow. um, in my career you guys are doing an amazing job and i can't wait to see what you guys are going to do in the future like y'all are super dope Yo. <laughs> much appreciated so yes you know officially part of the dope and damage gang we're gonna have mm -hmm. you back um guys everybody in the in the comments uh definitely get engaged in the comments follow us everywhere on social media follow venus um we're dope and damage everyone on streaming platforms and on youtube of course so make sure to tune in and support um independent artists just follow her comment like share do whatever it takes to make this work and um Let's stay connected and uh, go stream Alanis. Go stream Alanis. Yes. Absolutely. Please, go stream. Alanis. Go stream. Purchase yeah. down. Sure. All of that. Absolutely. All of that. Amazing. Yes. All of that. All <laughs> of that. <laughs> All right, y'all. Thanks for tuning in, guys. And we will be back with a brand new episode next week. Peace out. Peace and love. Peace and love. Peace out. Peace and love.